So when we think about the absolute value, um, this is the notation for it, the two straight up and down lines around what's efforts in there. Absolute value, um, a real a simple way to think about it is it's a distance measure. And it's asking how far away from zero is the thing that's in here. So if I say like the absolute value of five, well, that's five away from zero. Or if I say the absolute value of negative five, that distance is still five, even though it's in a different direction. Some people say absolute value just turns negative things positive. Uh, a real official definition of it is that it's a piecewise function where uh, this is equal to x if the original uh, x is greater than or equal to zero, right? If it's positive or zero, it's just itself. And then it gets multiplied by negative one. It's, it's negative x if its original value is less than zero, right? So like if x is negative five, negative negative five is positive five. There's a, there's a good definition for it. Now a graph of this thing looks like this, where it goes over one, up one, as a slope to zero, zero. Notice it's, it's just the line y equals x, where these negative values get reflected up here, so it does this. So absolute value is always going to be a, a V like that. And we could we could kind of move this thing around or we could kind of change what this graph looks like if we do some things to the function. So for example, if we say like, um, I'll just call this next thing G. If I say negative absolute value of X, well, all these absolute value, you know, spits out all these Y values, all those Y values get negated. So instead of going over one, up one, it's going to go over one, down one in both directions. It would look like that. Still have this vertex here at the point zero, zero. Um, or if I say, let's say I said this was two times x, uh, times the absolute value of x. It's going to stretch it by two. Instead of going over one, up one, it's going to go over one, up two. It's going to be steeper, like it's going to have a slope of two. So I can have a multiplier out here, stretches it up and down direction. In other words, it goes over one and it goes up or, up or down A if A is positive or negative. And the other things I can do is I can, I can maybe move it up and down. So for example, if I had uh, absolute value of X plus two, notice I'm still outside the function. These are all these Y values. They've all had two added to them. So this moves up to this point now, zero, two, still goes over one, up one. Or if I said, uh, you know, minus three. Well, it's gonna move it down three, so still goes through that. Now it goes through zero, negative three, that's vertex, still has a slope of one over one, up one. So I could, whatever I add or subtract out here, I'll call that K, it moves it up down that much. In other words, that's just like the, the Y value of the vertex. And now here's one little, one little tricky piece. What goes on inside? I moved it up down. Uh, I have stretched it up down. So how about if I do some stuff on the inside? If I go plus four. Well, here's what's happening is I'm adding four to all the X's before I absolute value it. I'm changing the X values. And um, think about this point on my original function. When X is zero, the absolute value of zero is zero. So if I want that zero absolute valued, this would have to be a negative four. This is actually gonna move it left four. It's a little counterintuitive. It feels like you should move it right. But think about what zeroing this thing out. If you zero this out and negative four zeroes it out, and then I've got that. So I'm gonna put in here, since it's the opposite of what it should do, I'm gonna say negative H. This moves it left, right? So if, let's say I wanted to sketch a graph of H of X is three times the absolute value of X plus two. Well, let's think about what the pieces do. This is going to stretch it by factor of three, so it'll go over one, up three from its vertex. This is going to move the vertex left two. This is going to move the vertex up one. So the point negative two, one 
is about there. Then it'll be kind of steep, like over one, up three. Just go always over one and then up or down, whatever this is. You know, let's say that this instead of a three was a negative one half. Doesn't change the vertex at all. Vertex is still at the same spot. But now it goes over one, up a half, or down a half, sorry, because it's negative. Over one, down a half. So it's still always over one. That's going to multiply it. Now, let's do one more like this. Well, my vertex is going to be at the point four. What made zeros that out? Five. So four, five. I'll just label that as four, five. And then that parent function, you know, goes over one, up one. But since I'm multiplying all these outputs by negative three, that's going to go over one, but down three. So it's going to be that V right there. And, you know, this part right here isn't part of the function, right? That's just showing that I'm going over one, down three. So I can graph this, move it left, right, move it up, down, and stretch it with that multiplier. So let's solve some equations that have absolute value in them. Absolute value of x is equal to 3. So that means that x equals 3, or x could equal negative 3, right? Because both of those are 3 away from 0. Um, you know, when we're removing this absolute value, we're going plus or minus versions of that. So I could, I could apply that to this as well. Uh, absolute value of 2x minus 6 equals 8. So I know that 2x minus 6 is going to equal 8. But I also know that 2x minus 6 could equal negative 8. And so notice I have two equations to solve here, uh, one for the positive 8 and one for the negative 8. So in both cases, I'll add 6 to both sides. And you might do the problem all the way separate instead of just run them parallel. And then divide everything by 2. So x could equal 7 divided by 2, or x could equal negative 1. And those are my answers. Um, it's not a big deal. Typically, you, you list answers in ascending order. So, you know, like if I was being really textbooky, I would say the answers are negative 1 and 7. But notice if I plug a negative 1 into here, negative 1, negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. There's my negative case, right? That came from this one. If I plug in negative 1, uh, oh, that would have been... Negative would have been my negative case. If I plug in 7, uh, 7 times 2 is 14, minus 6 is positive 8. That was my positive case. So in this case, x could be two things. Graphically, if I, th if I think back to the graphs, this left-hand side, the graph of this, um, is like a certain shape, and when does it cross 8? That's kind of what we're, what we're doing there. When does it cross a height of 8? All right, uh, similar with this one, uh, 2x minus 1 equals 3. So I could say uh, 2x minus 1 equals 3, or, and 2x minus 1 equals negative 3. Those, those should both, those both have the potential to yield me answers. And so notice what I did was I swapped out the absolute value for a positive case and a negative case. I negated the answer here, kept the answer the same here. Solve them out, add 1 to both sides. 2x equals 4, divide by 2 equals 2. And if I do the negative case, add 1 to both sides. Uh, 2x equals negative 2, divide by 2, and x is equal to negative 1. And you can always plug them back in and check them and, and see if they work. So solving these, uh, you know, pretty straightforward. I want to show you uh, two problems that I think really illustrate something well. All right, so if I was solving this, I'm going to fix it a little bit. I don't, I don't really like. Okay, so if I was solving this, 1 equals absolute value of 2, uh, uh, 2 times absolute value of x plus 1 minus 5. Think about this graphically. This shape has a vertex at 1, negative, negative 1, negative 5. So negative 1, negative 5. And then it's going over 1, up 2, so it's pretty steep. And, you know, this is pretty low. Like if my x-axis and y-axis, let's say they're like terrible y-axis. And then this is the graph of that. And what we're asking it is when is this equal 1? When does this have a height of 1? And you can see it's going to happen in two spots. And I didn't graph it necessarily very accurately. So I don't know if this is in the positive or negative, but I'm just going to solve this. 
So add five to both sides. Six equals two times the absolute value of x plus one. Divide both sides by two. And now that I have the absolute value all alone, now I can split it into two cases. I can say, well, this absolute value equals three, so sometimes it will, can equal negative three, or it can equal positive three. Solve each of those, subtract one from both sides. X equals negative four, subtract one from both sides, or two. And there's my two answers there. Great. All right, let's do this next one. Uh, subtract seven from both sides. So six equals three times the absolute value of x plus two. Oh, negative six, sorry about that. Divide both sides by three. Negative two equals the absolute value of x minus two. Now you, keep, you could keep going from here. Um, and then when you plug your answers in, they're not gonna work. Uh, why? Well, it's saying the absolute value is equal to a negative number. That can't happen. Absolute value only spits out positive numbers. So you, if you hit a point where you have like absolute value, solve for absolute value and it's equal to a negative, you say right away, no solution. You don't really have to go further than that. You know, if I think graphically about this, this is at the point two seven. So two seven would be like up here. It's multiplied by three, so it's going over one up three. So it's going ooh, pretty steep like this. That graph is this right-hand side. And if I think about when is y equal to 1, that's here, you can see how these will never cross. So we can have some no solutions uh, with absolute values. Just a side note, we could have one answer too, right? Like, let's say that it, it just touched the line I was trying to make it equal to. This is x. It could just have one answer as well. Now, that's how you solve equations. We can also have some inequalities with absolute values. So the absolute value of x minus 5, uh, when is that less than 4? Or when is it greater than 4? These are two different problems. All right, so we have this same idea where let's treat it like it's equal. So we know that this could be 4 or negative 4. That'll kind of be our extremes, our, our endpoints of our solution. But let's do it this way. So the regular case is just going to be x minus 5 is less than 4. And now when we negate it, we've got this x minus 5. We're going to negate that 4. But we're going to negate this as well, greater than uh, negative 4. This is going to help us get our answers. So add 5 to both sides here. x is less than 9. Add 5 to both sides here. x is greater than 1. Um, and so see, x is less than 9 or x is greater than one. So there's a collection of uh, numbers here. This is actually an and statement, right? Like if one's here and nine's here, it's everything that's between these two things, between one and nine. I could write this two ways. I could say one is less than x. Well, I could write it three ways, which is less than nine. I could write it this way. I'd say and. I could write it this way. One is less than x, which is less than nine. And another way I could write it is what's uh, called a set notation. And in, in a set notation, I'm going to say, I'm going to use these soft brackets. And that looks like a point. But if I, do, if, if I think of this as set notation, this soft bracket means uh, not equal to. And this means from 1 to 9. So these two things are saying the same thing. Let me, let me do another one. Um, and if it was if it was less than or equal to, I'd use a hard bracket, which looks like this. So let me do this one then. Um, so I'm going to swap this out for positive and a negative. X minus five is greater than four. X minus five. I'm negating the four, so I'm going to negate the inequality, which flips it, is less than negative four. So add five. X is greater than nine. Add five. <laughs> 5, x is less than 1. Now notice x is greater than 9, so like 10, 11, 12. x is less than 1, 0, negative 1, etc. These can't be the same. These can't both happen at the same time. So this is an or statement. Like if 9 is here, it's anything greater than 9. And if 1 is here, it's anything less than 1. So the way that I am, um, there's a couple ways I could write this. One of the ways I'm going to write it is 
from negative infinity to one, right? That's all of this unioned with nine to infin to positive infinity. So this is two sets put together. U means union. Put these sets together. Um, so negative one to inf negative infinity to one. Boop, boop. And this is a soft bracket because it can never be equal to infinity. So from negative infinity to one, that's this part, unioned with nine out to positive infinity. And again, you know, if this had like been a greater than or equal to, this would be a hard bracket because that nine would be part of the solution. But but it wasn't. I'm gonna do one more, uh, two more. No, one more example. All right, so I've got uh, negative two times the absolute value of k minus four is less than or equal to negative six. Beep bop, beep bop. So one of my cases is this thing. Whoops, absolute value is gone. I'm getting rid of it by doing this. Is less than or equal to negative six. And the other one, both these things get negated. All right, go to solve this, divide by negative two, add four. So k is less than or equal to seven. Okay, let's think about this side. Divide by negative two, add four. So k is less than or equal to seven. So seven's here, can be less than or equal to it. k is greater than or equal to one, one's here. So I could write this as one is less than or equal to k, which is e less than or equal to seven. If you're gonna write this in set notation, it would be hard bracket because it's equal to included from one to seven the range from one to seven those are the, my k values and if it if it didn't but if it had been like this here's my one here's my seven i would have written this as negative infinity to one hard bracket because one is included in it unioned with the set seven hard bracket to infinity great Give those problems a try. Message me with questions or post them in the forum.